Alright, so in this video, we're going to be talking about the alternating series test. Okay, now this is the fifth test that we'll be learning. We have the test for divergence, the integral test, the comparison test, limit comparison, and now we're on alternating series. Okay, so every test that we've been talking about thus far has been just dealing with positive terms. Okay, it's been dealing with 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth and so on and so forth. Okay. But what if we throw in some negative terms? Okay, what if we had a series that was like 1 minus 1 half plus 1 fourth minus 1 eighth plus 1 sixteenth on and on and on. Now you'll notice that this series has alternating signs. That's why we can use this alternating series test. Okay, you see that we have alternating signs, so alternating series will work. All right, now writing this as an actual sum, I mean, this is kind of how we're used to seeing it, right? In this sum notation, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of, well, what? Well, actually, it'd be probably a little easier if we did n equals 0, because then we can do just a negative 1 to the n, right? That's how we get an alternating sign. We do that negative 1 to the n, that's going to come back for this test. And then we have a 2 to the n on the bottom. All right, and that is your alternating series right there. Okay, that, that defines this. So the general alternating series form, all right, this is the, I guess I can say the, the general form. So you basically end up with, you know, a sub n equals negative one to the n minus one times b sub n, okay? And that b sub n is very important, okay? It's basically every single part of that series except for that negative 1 to the n minus 1. And you also have a sub n equals negative 1 to the n times b sub n, same thing, all right? Now, that's not the only way, and you'll see in some of our examples that that's not the only way that you can make an alternating series, but those are the most common that you will see, all right? So now we can get into what the alternating series test actually says. So here is the alternating series test in its entirety. So if we have that alternating series here, uh, negative one to the n minus one times b sub n, where you get that alternating b sub or b sub one minus b sub two plus b sub three minus b sub four, and on and on and on, where b sub n is greater than zero, right? That's the only negative part. So your b sub n is everything that's not negative, so it should be greater than zero. Okay, that's that's how this test works. And you have decreasing terms when we when we say that we're referring to the b sub n, right? b sub n plus one is less than or equal to b sub n for all n. And you have the limit as n approaches infinity of b sub n equal to zero. Then you know that this series is convergent. Okay, so you just need to figure out if it's decreasing. We've done that with the with the integral test. That was one of the things that we had to do. And you need to figure out that limit as n approaches infinity of everything in that series but that negative 1 to the n minus 1. If that equals 0, then great, your series is convergent. And that's what the alternating series test is saying. So let's do a quick example. So let's try to see if this series right here is convergent by the alternating series test. Okay, the, the first thing that we need to do, it might be a little easier for you to see what your b sub n is if we kind of break this apart. And you'll be able to see this just fine uh, once you kind of get used to this. But you have a negative 1 to the n. Right? That's your alternating part. And that's going to be times your b sub n, which is everything else, which is that 1 over 2 to the n. Now, this 1 over 2 to the n, that's, of course, going to be greater than 0, right? We're plugging in anything, well, actually, anything positive to any any power that you put in. That's It's going to be positive anyway. So now we have to figure out if this b sub n is going to be decreasing. So if is 1 over 2 to the n greater than 1 over 2 to the n plus 1. All right. Well, if you have a higher power here, okay, that's a higher power in the denominator than this, that means you're going to get a larger denominator here. And that means that you get a smaller fraction overall. So this is true. It is decreasing. The other thing that we need to check is if the limit as n approaches infinity 
equals zero. If it does, then we can say that this is convergent by the alternating series test. Now remember what we're putting in here, it's just that B sub n. And we know that our B sub n, as I said before, is just this piece right here, okay? Everything but that negative one to the n or whatever is making the series alternating, okay? So we take the limit as n approaches infinity of one over two to the n, and you can see here that as n approaches infinity, you'll get an infinitely large denominator, which means this is going to go to zero, okay? Thus, the series is convergent by the alternating series test. And that's going to do it for this video. So if this video helped you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe by clicking my icon in the top left. You can also view the playlist for sequences and series in the next video in the series. Lastly, if these videos are really helping you and you would like to consider supporting me, I have my Patreon linked in the description down below, along with some other pretty cool links that you should definitely check out. See you soon.